I think, you know, it's the vanity factor as well. When you're a CEO of a tech company, uh, you want to have all your guys in, in house. Uh, you want to see your tech team in the morning and like everyone is working. But in the end, in Hong Kong, uh, you pay a lot of money for uh, shitty offices. It's complicated to find developers. So I realized quite quickly that in the end, if I wanted to serve my clients and not to have my developers, I'd better find a solution that uh, helped me uh, deliver the fastest. And in the end, that was you guys. So it was so complex to manage my developers. And uh, even today, I would be like, bah, I would think twice before hiring uh, in-house resources. Hi, Antoine. It's a pleasure to, to speak with you today. You're the founder and, and CEO of um, Albert. Maybe you could you know, start telling us a little bit about your business and um, at the second time, maybe the Arcanis team composition? Sure. Basically, the business uh, is composed of uh, apps. Uh, we sell um, SaaS, so software as a service, to apps, iOS, Android, and uh, management platform uh, web-based plus some analytics uh, related to um, the activity. Uh, what we do is uh, employee engagement. So we specialize in uh, corporate softwares uh, for uh, medium to big companies uh, with dispatched workforce. Uh, so the idea is for management uh, to be able to interact with content, to uh, uh, develop, create, organize uh, libraries of content on the web and be able to distribute this content uh, to uh, their uh, remote teams. Uh, they receive the teams, uh, the content on the app directly, and the objective is for them to uh, interact on a, a platform that is super easy to use. With a lot of focus on the user experience on the mobile apps uh, to really offer to our target audience, which is uh, deskless employees, something a very easy to use corporate software. Our team in Arcanis is now our full team, actually. Uh, we started working with the, this team uh, back, I think, more than five years ago. And the, the, the entire team is, is from is from Arcanis. So we have uh, two people in charge of the mobile, so one on iOS, one on Android, uh, one for the backend, uh, one for uh, our CMS, uh, and one project manager and one tester. Cool. And I think you have a few really nice uh, customers. So maybe can you uh, display the names of, of some of the customers you have? Oh, sure. Yes, uh, historically, we've been working with retail. Uh, so uh, in, the, in the last years, uh, we've been working for the Richmond Group. Uh, we can mention uh, the watch brand uh, Panerai, for instance, which is a very uh, historical client. Uh, and we have a very uh, uh, strong and long lasting relationship with them. We've been uh, working with them for same about six years, I think. Um, more recently, we just uh, turned to uh, cosmetic brands like Aesop, so cool cosmetic brands uh, from Australia. Uh, as well as we've been working with uh, Saint Laurent, big fashion company, uh, Dior, the same for many years. Uh, so different, uh, different brands around uh, high-end fashion, uh, watchmaking and jewelry, uh, historically, and now expanding to uh, wider retail. Okay, cool. And so, can you tell me? Uh, I mean, why why Arcanis, and what problem did we solve uh, when we first met, or when you heard about us? And yeah, and how did it start? I mean, I think it started, uh, I started the first uh, iteration uh, of the system with an agency here in Hong Kong. So it took about a year and a half to complete uh, the first iteration. And I was very happy uh, to, uh, to work with this agency at the beginning. And then when uh, we went into a stage of more maintenance and development, it was not working anymore to, uh, to use an agency, which was normal. So I had the choice to either uh, hire everyone or to do uh, outsourcing, or basically I had to find developers. And I was in Hong Kong, and um, honestly, finding developers in Hong Kong is not the easiest, uh, not the cheapest as well. Even though I was not looking for the cheapest, I was really looking for quality. And I think I was associating a lot uh, outsourcing uh, with not so high quality. And like, so I, I looked a bit everywhere and I, I did a lot of research around uh, Vietnam, uh, Thailand, uh, India, the Philippines. Uh, and in the end, I was recommended to Arcanis uh, via a common uh, friends. It was, I think, uh, the, the biggest challenge for me as a non-technical founder uh, and a solo founder uh, was to be able to hire. Tech I couldn't test anyone, you know, I don't code. Uh, I can't test anyone. I don't know who is good, who is bad. 
uh, and especially at this time where it was like a boom in like everyone wanted to be a developer. Uh, and uh, now I realize the years after that, not everyone is a developer and you have to, you know, check things. Uh, so for me, it was, a, it was a contract of trust because I was recommended. I knew I could trust. And then because it worked, uh, I continued to trust. For me, a lot of like peace of mind to know that someone is uh, hiring developers, developing them continually, training them, making sure that everything is working. If someone is leaving the team, that this person is going to be replaced. Uh, and I don't have to stress out and say, oh, shit, uh, let's call the uh, HR agency and uh, pay 21% uh, again to uh, find someone because I can't recruit, right? Uh, and once again, I'm not technical. I still don't have a uh, technical person. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's very easy for us as business people to say, okay, we can manage a team. This team is managed. Uh, they are autonomous and they deliver high quality products. So uh, it's uh, at the moment, I would not see how to change this approach. So how is your team doing so far? Like, okay, it's been a few years, right? Uh, you've, you've started with, uh, I think you've started with just one or two guys for uh, mobile development and then um, and then I think it was also difficult for you to keep a team in Hong Kong. I think you hired a few people at, when we were, uh, when we started talking, you had a few people in house. I think you even have a, had a CTO. Um, and then, and then, uh, so we started slowly with the, with the mobile. And I think then you decided, okay, I'm going to uh, trust Arcanist with the, with the whole team. It was a bit of a two-step process. Is that how I remember it? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you're right. Uh, it's been a while. Wow. I had a CTO at that time, uh, and uh, it was a hybrid. So I think, yes, you're right. The majority of developers at the beginning was in-house and the minority was, uh, within Arcanis. Uh, and in the end, uh, I think we, uh, I don't know how long it took, but we replaced, uh, we still had a few developers. You remember Igor last year, uh, working on different parts of the system. Uh, but in the end, it's uh, I think it's a real challenge to uh, develop developers. Uh, I remember especially uh, the, the first developer we had, Marcus Hugo. Uh, they were amazing. Uh, they were young uh, developers, uh, very willing to learn, very willing to work. And I think they were very efficient. But at the same time, they were in need of a lot of structure. Uh, which is not the role of your developers, you know, to go uh, behind my developer's code and everything. Uh, so uh, it was, uh, I think it was a bit difficult for me to manage, uh, a bit complicated to offer them uh, like a challenge and a frame. And, uh, you know, they want to learn developers. We, as startups, we don't pay as much as banks, you know. Uh, so if you don't have the salary of what a bank can offer you and you are not learning something specific, you know, something new, then so we managed to keep them at least two or three years, I think. Uh, but in the end, progressively, replacing them in-house didn't make sense. So I think that's how well, we came to replace everyone with you guys because it was easy, you know, So and it was good. Yeah, I think the only reason why you weren't able to manage to develop these guys is because your CTO, you didn't have a CTO. So it was your job. And of course, it's not your, your, your specialty. Yeah. I mean, I had a CTO for four months. <laughs> Yeah, and I remember, it's funny, I think one thing that you told me when we started discussing at the very beginning uh, was I have no intention of working with you for a long time. I want to have everybody in-house after a while, but I need some help with the mobile development. And then I'm glad we, <laughs> we managed to convince you that that we could we could uh, we could work with you and it's been a nice uh, nice ride so far no but yes definitely i think you know it's the vanity factor as well uh, when you were ceo of a tech company uh, you want to have all your guys in in house uh, you want to see your tech team in the morning and like everyone is working but in the end in hong kong uh, you pay a lot of money for uh, shitty offices um, it's complicated to find developers so i realized quite quickly that in the end if i wanted to serve my clients and not to have my developers uh, I'd better find a solution that uh, helped me uh, deliver the fastest. And in the end, that was you guys. So it was so complex to manage my developers. And uh, even today, I, I would be like, bah, I would think twice before hiring uh, in-house resources. So what does your Arcanist team allow you to do? Like, uh, can you go uh, faster than, than you could before if you had your own team? Um, is it cheaper? Uh, yes, I think maybe it is a bit cheaper. Uh, I think I've, I've been... Uh, 
contacted by a lot of other providers for IT and uh, Arcanix is definitely not the cheapest. Uh, and that's not what I was looking for. Uh, me, I was more looking for uh, quality, security, and also a sense of uh, responsibility. I think today, what is, what is the most convenient for me is that we can also rely on the entire organization, uh, whether uh, we have an issue. So for instance, we had uh, challenges over integrations with ex external systems, uh, risk assessments, security data questions, you know, and sometimes uh, your guy, Eric, uh, comes in, you know, I have uh, infrastructure question or security questions. Every time Alan tells me, yes, take, take Eric uh, on the phone, uh, he'll see what he can do and recommend someone else potentially to work and to help. So it's, you know, it's just, you're not just buying the time of developers. You are also buying uh, the knowledge base of an entire company that, that has been working on tech development uh, for a long time. So it's, uh, it's kind of reassuring to know that whatever my question would be, I'm sure someone will be able to answer it. Uh, and regarding my team, I mean, they, they work super well together. I think now we're a bit sad that we don't get to see them uh, anymore because some, you know, we're in Hong Kong, so it's not very far. And Cebu is very nice to visit. It's always a very nice excuse to go see you guys. But, you know, in a home office uh, situation anyway, no, no time difference is the same. So they, they, yeah, they bring me a lot of, you know, I sleep well at night. You know, I know that my system is not going to crash. And uh, if it does, someone is going to fix it and quick and they take responsibility for it. Uh, so I think they've been well, uh, well educated. Okay, good. So do you chat with them often? Are you managing the team uh, directly or? No, I'm not managing the team directly. Over, yes, yes and no, actually. Uh, we don't really have a PM uh, within the team. So Victoire, my head of client experience and I uh, manage both of us uh, product. Uh, Victoire more in details, uh, but me on the big lines. And yes, I'm in contact with them almost every day. So not by phone, we have uh, uh, our weekly meetings, we have two weekly meetings, and then it's mostly Slack. Um, and you were mentioning uh, that you cannot come visit anymore uh, because we, of the COVID situation, obviously. But how often were you coming? Was it uh, three, two, three times a year? I think so. I don't remember uh, exactly. It, it, depended on, it uh, was depending on the periods because I was traveling a lot. So I wish I did it more often. But we had, I think we sent a developer, one of ours, uh, spent a bit more time with you guys. We had a few. Right, that's right. Yeah. Was it Marcus? Uh, we had Marcus, we had Ines, and we had Igor coming. Beyond, uh, Hugo didn't come, I think. But yeah, we had a few of them coming. Uh, last time I went with uh, Brice and Victoire. So it's, uh, it, uh, to me, it's kind of important still to, um, uh, to come and see the devs because they are really our team, you know, it's not like we have a team and a project a product manager talking to us and we don't know who is actually coding. Uh, I mean, we, we manage directly the team. Uh, we know what they're doing. We know what they're working on. So it's good also. It's been, uh, if we if we talk about, for instance, I think he's the only one, but Harrison, I think he's there from the beginning. Uh, he resigned once, he left us, and then he came back. Yeah, he left for, I think, one year. He I think he wanted to start his own business uh, or he joined a startup that he was part of. And then uh, it didn't work. So after one year, he decided to to come back and and we got him back and i'm so happy so i think you mentioned this a little bit already but uh do you have anything else to add on how you would say this collaboration is impacting your your business uh yes i think the global outlook is peace of mind uh once again uh, as a non-technical founder uh, i need to understand that someone is really taking care of what they're doing uh, you know for instance uh, recently one of our clients asked us about our security process I was like, oh, uh, do we have a security process? Uh, and of course we do, because you guys have, and that's the, the relationship we've built, uh, how you handle data, uh, how you handle security, uh, which is the reason why we chose you. Uh, we knew you were um, uh, good, you know, uh, you were a professional. Uh, and then we were like, okay, yes, actually we checked the list. And I was like a bit panicking, but in the end it's all good. You know, we just go through the steps and we're like, Okay, this is good. This is good. This is good. Okay, you guys, that's good. So yes, peace of mind. I think we know that they are not doing uh, uh, whatever, whenever, uh, that they are managed, that they are well trained, that they know what they're doing. Uh, and we know they can ask for support uh, when they need support. Uh, so uh, it's, 
yeah, overall me, it helps me sleep at night. Cool. Uh, good to hear that. Um, and so last question. Um, I think you also explained a little bit throughout the, uh, the, the questions I, I, I asked you, but um, could you have achieved the same results uh, with in-house developers? Do um, you have anything to add to that? I think I would not be sleeping. Uh, so yes, maybe. I mean, I, I, would not, I would not have taken the risk, I think, now. Uh, and I would not be willing to replace them as well because it's as long as you don't have someone who's checking who is develop as long as you don't have a structure in the end uh, that can welcome uh, properly uh, developers, I would not do anything differently. So w if I could have succeeded, maybe, but I think it would have. You know, when you're a founder, a solo founder, uh, especially you have a lot of things to deal with. Uh, product tech is important, but you don't want to spend your time managing tech things, you know, all the time. And if you're managing in house, either you have a CTO, uh, a PM, and like proper structure, and then it works. Uh, it hasn't worked for me so far, and this works, and my clients are happy. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um... Well, thanks a lot. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to add one last or not before we, we end the interview. Outsource uh, tech companies is the outreach uh, sales things I receive the most often. And I think uh, there is not really a reality in between no outsource, outsource. I think there is a lot of different models, but there is also a great attention to be paid uh, to the partner you choose, depending on the model you want to have. Uh, working with you guys is not only just having guys, because I could have a CTO, most of my teams in-house, and then use resources. Uh, we chose you uh, because there was all this structure, this accompaniment, and this quality that was ensured. Uh, so yes, that's, that's the only thing, you know, if uh, outsourcing is just uh, such, such a big uh, word that encompasses a lot of different things. Uh, but in the end, I, I don't really consider you as an outsourcing, like, I mean, yes, as a partner, but not just outsourcing, you know, it's like, uh, it's, uh, it's our team, it's something that really belongs to us and acts uh, as a team. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, in addition to the skills, we, we really managed to create a spirit and something very special, uh, which makes me consider them as my team, which is cool. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, th and that's what we were trying to achieve, right? Is that you feel like it's your team, and uh, um, I mean, you have their time anyway, and uh, trying to help you as much. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, Antoine. Um, it's been nice to have you, um, and I hope I'll see you soon. Thank you. Yes, me too. See you, friend. Bye bye.